This is a little workflow of how to generate variable helix geometries in Geomagic Design X. First of all, we should have a look on the position of the part according the global origin. And in here, it's clearly not aligned. So we have to align it first. And therefore, it makes sense to generate regions using auto segmentation. In here, triangles will be uh, segmented into areas of similar curvature and uh, these regions will also be classified so we can clearly see what type of geometry these triangles are located in and that makes it quite easy to find information on the regions and we can also work on the regions if they are not in a shape you like. So in here, this region is a little bit too big and we can easily split it into more convenient regions. After that is done, we can extract geometries, reference geometries from it. Let's start with a plane on this region, having a look that it's also just uh, using triangles that are in a planar shape uh, by using the outlier removal. With a preview, you can see that in here there is some geometry that is not really in the plane, so this is removed automatically and we can continue. Same uh, applies to vectors. So if you select a cylindrical region and you choose to find the cylinder axis, it will perfectly work on that, like here, or same on this one. Now, these are important informations for our alignment, uh, which comes next. The alignment is, as usual, an interactive alignment. And in here, we just have to find the position, which is the intersection of the center vector with the plane and two directions, which is for the z-axis, first vector, you can switch the direction if you like, and the second vector, which is basically this one. Now the alignment is done and the part is positioned perfectly on our origin, on our cat um, origin. You can delete the reference geometries you did before because we don't need them anymore. And start with the reverse engineering process. So next one is that we're going to generate a first rotational body um, that is done with a simple mesh sketch on our part. Having a look at that, And in here, you can see that the center axis can be converted with a right mouse click to a center line, which is quite useful in here. And the rest is just sketching the features you need in here. That can be done for this object with three rectangles in the beginning can use trim, power trim, to clean up the sketch a little bit. Also in here and in there. And then you can simply snap the points as needed on our object, which is quite comfortable and fast. 
just like that. Next thing would be that we are looking for finer details. So, for example, you could immediately add the chamfer in here on these two lines or have this geometry also sketched in here. Of course, we need some dimensions in there. So we can better use the construction intention in our sketch. When that is done, uh, we can still add some fillets, maybe specifying also some values to make our living easier. And finally, add some help geometries, which here is basically a second center line to completely define some geometry is needed on our part. So there are also constraints available. We can add a tangent constraint in here. Should of course be in the right position for that so we can move that a little bit closer and add the constraint in there. Finally, there's just a little correction needed and we can use corner trim to clear that model. Important that if something like this happens, you can also use power trim again to clear that. There we go. When that is done, we can end the sketch, go to model and revolve our model in here. So this is the beginning of that model. Then we have to take care about our um, helix geometries, which is basically uh, containing three surface bodies. Let's start with the first one, which is the easiest one. It's again a mesh sketch using this plane. Let's have a look. Maybe we can use a rotational method that also requires a center axis. Well, we have one and we can rotate our information to a better position. There we go. When the sketch is done, we will rotate it. So first of all, using the information we have in here, we simply sketch almost a rectangle, but not completely. The position of these two points is then located right on the edges of our model using the piercing option. Can do the same on the other side in here. And that's all we need, almost all we need um, on that sketch. Of course, the position of this one should be located right at the end in here. That's all we need for the second body 
to be revolved. Of course, we can still grab our center vector and make it a center line again, which is quite helpful if you want to revolve it. Now we are not generating a body, but a surface by revolving this sketch. And that's what we get. There's still something missing, of course, and this is our helix surfaces. And therefore, it makes sense to unroll our body. For this operation, we need um, a point as a reference point, and that point can be located on the outer diameter, somewhere close to the outer diameter, just here. We see that in X direction, it's quite close to um, a comfortable number. So first of all, we could think of putting it to 30 millimeters. Now, this number can be better, and uh, therefore we have to switch on our pocket calculator and multiply that number with three and divide it by pi. Comes out another number and we can copy the first few digits of that number. Oh, come on. Just copy it and replace it in here. That is the reposition of that point where we want to have it because this marks also the neutral diameter of our unrolling. With that, we can start in polygons and unroll the scan. So that's a target. The axis is, of course, our z-axis and the radius of the unroll will be defined by the position of that point. Takes a while to unroll. And uh, when it's done, we will see one full revolution unrolled on the screen. There we go. But we still have more um, revolutions on the part. So that's one, two, three, four, five in total. So we need five more, uh, sorry, four more of those um, uh, ashes. And you can simply use Ctrl C to copy the unrolled mesh and Ctrl V to add it. One time, two times, three times, four times. So now we can just move our copies in a way that they exactly end up on the other side of the original unroll. And because we divided the neutral diameter by pi, it's quite easy to calculate the movement of the part, which is basically six times the original value we used means 180 millimeters. So that is done in alignment, transforming, selecting all of them. And in the next stage, we can move that in Y direction by 180 millimeters. Fits exactly. Continuing with three Others of them doing the same workflow. Same thing in here. And so on. I think that next stage. And finally, one more time. Yeah. 
here we go. Now, when that is done, um, it's quite easy to go back to our polygons and merge them into a single mesh object. You can use mesh construction for that and go on the tighter side to get a nice result. So there we go. Simply calculate and you will get a single mesh object. And on that single mesh object, it's quite easy to sketch the unrolled helix curve and uh, acquire a reliable result on the variable helix. Here we go. So next thing is that we want to have a special sketch plane on a height of, let's say, 17 millimeters. And on this sketch plane, we can immediately start with a, another mesh sketch, like so. Um, the plane itself is set and we can use that immediately. There we go. Looking from the other side, reorienting makes living easier. And here is one full unrolled revolution. So having that, sketching is quite easy because now we can see how that is designed. It's basically designed of two lines in here, two lines in there. And we can add some more constraints like these two lines uh, should be Um, parallel, same in here. Also, these two lines should be parallel. That is quite helpful in this case. Now, next one would be to add some fillets. Don't have to add dimensions in here immediately. Just positioning them in a nice manner. And when you're done with that, you can also have a look on the deviation of that part to find out if you can reorient the whole thing a little bit better to make it more or less accurate. There we are. When you're done with that, Back. Simply resize the lines because it's always good to have the surface a little bit longer so you're able to cut it in a nice manner. There we go. And that is the 2D sketch we need for our helix curves. Now, of course, that's a planar geometry we have in here and we have to roll it uh, again. So therefore we need a 3D sketch in there. We can roll that curve or these two curves again. Target is our sketch in here. Axis is this one and the split point is our point and that's all we need. Here's our variable helix curve in 3D. 
now. There are still some things we can do in here. For example, it makes living easier if you merge the curves we have in here so we get a nicer result. That's number one. Then repeat that with control space. And we can do that on the second one also. And there we go. Now, since we have two merged splines, we can also work on them and change the number of control points on these splines to a little bit lower number. Not really necessary, but makes living easier. There we go. These are the guide curves for our uh, next operation. And we just need the profiles for the surfaces we are going to create. So let's go back on the original and start thinking of what to do next. So we still need some guide curves and therefore we can select a plane to sketch them. Let's go to a mesh sketch again. We get some nice positions in here. And we can immediately start sketching what we need. Now in here, let's take these ones. I would start sketching some arcs. One here. One here. And that's almost everything we need for there. But we should resize them again. So we have some parts to cut. And if we extend it, we can see that this arc is ending a little bit inside the model, which is the desired result. If you want to work a little bit more correctly, you can also add some points in here. Let's put this one in here. These points are located on our arcs and we can also move them directly on the splines by using the piercing option again. There we go. We still can correct the position of the arc if needed. Now we have a perfect profile for the next curves. Starting with the sweep operation. We have to select a profile and a path. And in this case, add merge tangent faces and a path alignment type to the center vector, which is our C vector. That's curve number one. And by showing the last sketch and of course in the 3D sketch, we can do that for the other side also. Let's go to sweep again. Select profile and path curve. And of course, the center vector as an alignment vector. There we go. Now we have three surface bodies and these three uh, surface bodies are encasing a single solid body. And whenever that happens, um, you can directly go to Solidify, select all these bodies, and you will get 
a perfect solid body. And this perfect solid body can then be Boolean merged with the other body we have in here. There we go. Now let's hide some sketches. And what is still missing are some fillets on the part and the center bore at the end. So using the fillets in here would be two fillets in here and another fillet down here. So if the fillet is not possible, computer will tell you by marking the area where it's not possible, but I think this fillet is also much too big. Let's get the result in here. We can immediately set the preview and you can see that it's off the surface in here. And by changing radius, you can immediately get the right information so you get a better part. Finally, there is the missing uh, countersink in here. Well, you can also import these things if you did that before. So let's do that in here. And we have the right one already generated sometimes before. Simply by importing it, we have two bodies again, and this body in here can now be used to cut out the countersink information. Now, therefore, we have to move that a little bit, and that is done by transform body, selecting the body, and aligning them with datum alignment. So therefore, we need a start information and the end information of the body. Let's take this circle this time. You see that it's perfectly aligned. That's a position where we would like to have it. And in here, we can use Boolean cut this time to select the tool and the target to cut out the countersink. And that's the result of the reverse engineering using roll and unroll. And you can easily have a look on what we have in here. Now, by letting it revolve, you can also see how the diameters are changing through the length of our helix curve we generated. And finally, by looking at the accuracy of our body, we can make sure that we constructed or reconstructed it with the right accuracy on our part.